Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part three of my son's Cadillac series. Uh, the first part I showed you the CTSV front end that we put on along with the hood. Uh, the second part of that series was the wheels and tires and the brake upgrade. But uh, in this part, we're gonna do the CTSV rear fascia and I am gonna show you a few things and we'll video the install. So this is brand new. I got this from GM. Uh, there's this chrome trim bezel here that I also bought, and there's a, a rubber uh, insert that goes in between the chrome trim and this piece here. This is a separate piece, and I had these all painted. They came in uh, black primer from GM. So one of the things that I noticed is this rear bumper cover is not V-specific, and if your bumper cover is in good shape, you might even be able to modify your own to get this exhaust cut out in. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So after I took this out of the package, I noticed that the uh, areas for the inserts for the trim, I was gonna use my son's trim out of his bumper, but they're longer. They come all the way to here. And the reason is they didn't change this cover. Somebody at GM yanked these off the assembly line and grabbed an air saw and just cut the center section out in a predetermined area. And then they molded these, and these are be specific because they go to here and not all the way to here. And you'll be able to see that when I take this off and in the pictures I put in the corner. I have to take this off, unfortunately, because this tab goes under it. The reason I put this all together is because without this insert in this chrome piece here, this thing is so flexible and I had it painted recently and I didn't want to crack the paint or have it lift in any, in any way. So I'll go ahead and flip this over and get this out and I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about. And you can clearly see they just cut this, they just cut this for the, for the near saw. I mean, they weren't even shy about it. So here's the back side. I need to push these through. And you just push the clips in there. And the clips have a little tab and they hook on the back side of these plastic tabs. So I'm going to put those tabs around these pieces as well. So these are the clips that, that you need to hold these pieces in, as well as the back trim piece in this area. They're the same as the clips that you use to hold the front grills of the CTSV in the front fascia. So this is what the back side is going to look installed. These tabs that come through the plastic piece have their own little locking tab on it, and then you have additional ones for these clips to keep them in as well. The reflectors just pop in. Here's the four for the, for the center section that, that I had to get painted. And that should be it, I'm ready for install. Okay, so I got on Amazon, I was looking for tips. My son has the V6, obviously, it's a base CTS, and we wanted to emulate the CTS V tips coming out, and his tips end further back here because he has the that um, V-shaped triangular opening that this, the, the base bumper has. So what I found were, found these four inch inner and outer stainless tips. They're gonna go here and they're gonna look sick. And I think they're long enough that they'll go back to where his end. Um, I am gonna have to do some modification uh, the tips that come out of his mufflers, I believe, are rectangular or parallelogram at best. Um, I am going to find a way to modify them and weld these on to his exhaust so that they are part of the exhaust and not attached to anything else. So I may end up making some brackets. Um, I'll level them out before I do anything and get them tacked in place. And once we're satisfied, I'll go ahead and weld them onto his exhaust system and you know, this will be good for as long as he owns the car. So, there you go. In a nutshell, that's it. I think I paid 
Uh, the fascia wasn't bad. I got it for about 350, but this bezel was also about 300. The chrome piece inside, I don't know, 150 bucks, something like that. Um, the trim pieces, the two black trim pieces and the reflectors alone for 238 bucks. So, you know, paint ran me, I think paint ran me another four or 500. It's that Trico um, uh, Diamond Pearl White, and it's not just base coat, clear coat. It's a three-stage paint. So inside your fender wells toward the rear, there's two push pins here, seven millimeter bolt that goes down here, and up top, pull this away. There's also a seven millimeter bolt that goes in there on top. So after you remove the four push pins and the four bolts, two on each side, you can grab your rear fascia right here and then just pull straight up and attaches into these clips right here and it'll pop right off. Um, also, don't forget to remove the ones at the bottom as well. Now, the four-door rear fascia may be different. I don't know, but this is how the Cooper rear fascia comes on. Okay, we got the rear fascia off. I want to show you the back side. Some of these models may differ according to what your car is optioned out like. So, on the inside panel, and I got this information from Eric, the parts manager at Cadillac. Uh, these are for the side motion detectors when someone comes up and you get the orange light that lights up on the side view mirrors. If your car has that, you need to order the fascia that has these places on the inside for these boxes to go. There is another fascia that does not have that. It's a completely different part number. So if your car has that option, you need to make sure that you get this one because we have to take these out with the wiring harness and the impact protector and we have to put it into the new fascia and we need to make sure that these places are there for these these control boxes to go so these control boxes just have a seven millimeter screw holding them in after you unplug it we'll go ahead and take that out and we'll transplant them into the new bumper okay so i got both boxes out on both sides i have the new bumper behind me and i have them installed i have them facing the same way so everything goes in the way that it came out now this inner structure right here is only held in with two clips one here and one here and if you look on the new bumper this is where they're going to go right here and right here so we're going to take that off i made sure i took the push pins out of here that hold the harnesses into these holes and i've unplugged all four of the backup sensors so when i pull this out i don't i don't yank on anything so we'll go ahead and get those two clips out. I'm going to use new clips that I have because I have extras and we'll get it in the new bumper. So also besides the, the two clips, I just noticed there's two screws here and here that hold the inner bumper structure on and it goes under that exhaust trim bezel. So when I look on the, the V bumper, that's what these are for. So I'm gonna make sure, I have, I'm gonna to have to probably use the anchors because these didn't come with anchors. I'll take the anchors for the screws off the old one. We'll put them on here and then we can get the inner structure in. I am gonna take the sensors out of the old bumper first and put the sensors in before I put the impact bar in there because I think it'll be a lot easier. If you look here, the sensors are kind of angled. This is kind of in the way. I think it'd be easier to do that first. So that's what your impact bumper looks after it's taken out. And now we can go ahead and start removing our backup sensors and getting those installed in the new bumper. So I got the backup sensors installed in the new bumper. Make sure that the uh, that rubber ring around the outside stays with it. And you can see here on the inside, it was a lot easier to get them out and get them in without putting the impact bar back in. And you can see they... The plugs face each other just like they came out and that way when I put the impact bar in there the wiring harness will match right back up to everything. Okay these are the anchors that I have to take out on the top of the exhaust trim and they had these insulators above it I guess I'm probably just to keep anything from rattling so we're gonna grab these I'm gonna pop these out we'll put them in the new bumper and we'll get the impact bar installed. Okay these are the cage nuts that I took out of the base CTS 
rear fascia above the exhaust trim. This is what's gonna hold the other part of the impact bar in. Now these are square, these cage nuts go into a square hole. Now let me show you the difference between this and the V-trim. Okay, here's the V-trim. So these square cage nuts are not gonna go in here. And after looking at them, as rusty as they are, I don't think that they would last. So I happen to have a large collection of cage nuts. Uh, this one is not thread specific in your, your screw will spread these out and grab the threads and tighten. This one is actually thread specific and it fits the screws that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these, slide them over the top of that, and we'll go ahead and get this installed. So we got the two screws in here to the exhaust trim. There's our two clips. We'll go ahead and push these push pins back into the holders. Plug that in, make sure it's cl it clips. This goes to the body harness. And then our, don't forget your four backup sensors. It's two. And that's it. This is all done. It's ready to go back on the car. But before we put that on, we have to uh, do some modification with the exhaust tips. Well, before I show you what we're gonna do with the exhaust, this is a good time to show you the places that you need to remove things. There's the one of the seven millimeter screws I talked about earlier. These two are push pins. And then there's another one right up here where you have to pull this back to get in there. Those those four fasteners and then the four on the other side plus the four on the bottom literally all that hold this on the car you just grab it from the center and pull up right here pops off these clips come right off so these are the tips that i bought for the rear fascia uh the brand is natami n-e-t-a-m-i i got them off amazon they're inner and outer walled they're really slick they look almost well they look better than factory so what I'm gonna end up doing is I wanted to slide these over and weld them on so they're, they're actually part of the exhaust system. These are oval, and if I hold this up here, it doesn't quite slide over it, but it's not a whole lot. So what I think I'm gonna do while everything's off, I'm gonna get a torch and I'm gonna heat these up and I'm gonna squeeze the outside edges to try and bring it back to more of a, a circular, round shape and hopefully I can slide these over without too much trouble. I really wasn't looking forward to cutting and modifying if I didn't have to at all. I may end up having to cut them shorter so when I slide these on it looks uh, more natural like it came with the car rather than having this protrude through the center very much but I don't want to cut anything until I get it to the point where they'll, where they'll slide on and I can see where I need it and I'll have to probably fit the bumper a couple of times to make sure that they're not too far out and they're not too far in. All right, well, here's what I got. You can see this is the way the factory exhaust tube was shaped. I went ahead and heated it up. I didn't get the big guns out. I just used a can of map gas. It's fine. Uh, a pair of channel locks, a body hammer, and now this goes on. It's kind of tight right here. Now I got it all the way back so I can figure out after I test the bumper where it needs to be, if it needs to be angled up, if it needs to be angled down, how far in I need to go. Um, obviously I'm going to be, I'm, I am going to cut some of the excess off here. I could probably go ahead and cut this side immediately since I already know where this side is going to be cut. And then you won't have the old exhaust sticking through this pipe. All right. Well, I was kind of hoping this was going to be a slam dunk, but I should have known better. So with the bumper on, the tips are hitting the exhaust trim piece. So, and if you can see here, these kick up as they come out of the muffler. So since I'm gonna cut most of it off anyway, so it doesn't show through the tip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut back here as close to this flange as possible so that I probably only have maybe three quarters or an, 
maybe an inch of exhaust in this tip, and then I think I'm gonna be able to bring it down more level. All right, well, here's what I ended up deciding to do. I, I cut them back pretty good, inch and a half. They're still hitting, and it's because they kick up. So there is a uh, support bar welded to the top of these because these it keeps these two mufflers uh, stable because they're actually two pieces. So you have a hanger there, there, and this holds it in the middle to keep it from moving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the, the pipes off at this flange behind this bracket and flip it around and weld it back onto the mufflers. And then instead of these kicking up, they'll kick down and then I'll be able to get the pipes on there. Okay, I got this supported with a bottle jack here to keep these mufflers level, keep them from moving around. This was like this. I went ahead and cut it off with a Sawzall. Now I'm gonna spin it around and now you can see that they're pointing down instead of coming up. I'll just re-weld that back on there and then we'll go ahead and uh, fit the bumper again and find out where those tips need to be. All right, well, I got these flipped and I got it welded on and they're pointing down. They still got kind of an up kick here at the end. So rather than force it and, and have it rattle, uh, I'm gonna cut these off here, get rid of this where it kicks up and see how far I can get them on and go back. And if I have to, I have enough, I got some room here that I might be able to trim this back. All right, well, I cut these off again. So this is pretty much the total that I've cut off each side. And now these will go on just like that. And then I'll, I'll get them centered and level and angled and, and figure out where I want them. And I'll, I'll tack them and then I'll weld them. But what I am gonna do, they stick out a little bit past the trim and I don't want all that exhaust soot all over the back end here. So I'm at the point where I can't cut these down anymore. So I got five eighths inch tape. I'm gonna cut this off here and I still have enough area to go ahead before it flares, slide it on and get them tacked. All right, well, I got them on, used bottle jack for the board, got them level, got the gap here uh, even and space from the center even, space on the sides, I got them tacked on both sides. We go ahead and take the bottle jack out, take the bumper cover back off, hopefully for the last time. Let's go ahead and get those welded up around the pipes. Well, there's the finished product. I got the tips on, I got them welded, not going anywhere. They're not hitting anything when the car moves around. That looks better than factory. So that's gonna be it for my son's Cadillac, I think. That's pretty much everything. That's the V fascia with the custom tips. They turned out pretty sick. We got the V rims, the hood, front fascia. So, Listen, it's not a 600 horsepower V, I get it. Some guys are like, just buy one. That's not the point. Uh, he wanted the all wheel drive. He lives in um, Quad City. I was like crazy. You don't need a 600 horsepower rear drive car in the winter. I mean, everybody needs one, but not in the winter. So this will get him through. So if you're interested, I got the parts list for the stuff for the uh, rear fascia swap. I also got the parts list for the front end swap in the hood. A couple of guys have done it. Uh, subscriber of mine his name's Chris he sent me pictures his dad gave him his uh, CTS four-door and Chris went ahead and did the uh, front end swap the hood swap he got some really killer uh, side rocker moldings and a really cool carbon fiber rear spoiler um, wicker bill spoiler it's sick I like it. it looks good he's got the chrome rims on it already went ahead and had everything painted at a, at a shop so you know, it's done professionally and he can go ahead and enjoy that. And if you like to check out his car more, he is on Instagram. You can see that right up here as well. I think that's going to be it. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We got some more videos coming out throughout the year. And we are going to be starting on the Jeep Hemi swap soon. Most of the suspension parts are in. We got an entire TerraFlex suspension kit. Uh, everything underneath there uh, that came from the factory is going away and we're installing Eaton electric lockers and uh, we're gonna put some 35s on it as well as the Falcon brand steering stabilizer up front. So keep an eye out for that, probably be coming out in the next three or four months. Thanks for watching, please subscribe.